the heat stress on our corn as well as um, drought stress and because of that we're seeing a lot of aspergillus air rot which in turn what gives us concerned about aflatoxin contamination. How do we tell whether we're, we have a problem of aflatoxin contamination in the corn? And if we consider first the pre-harvest effects, then what we want to do is to look, go out prior to harvest and look for the ear rot. Uh, and if you see uh, the symptoms of aspergillus ear rot, which would be the olive green mold growing on the ears, then you should consider certainly that there is aflatoxin going to be in that in the harvested grain and it should be tested. So there is a test that that has been used for many years which we call uh, looking at this grain under a black light uh, and looking for fluorescence. That fluorescence is not going to be uh, aflatoxin itself but is indicative of uh, that the mold that creates aflatoxin was growing on that grain. So what we'd like to do today is demonstrate how that test is performed. One of, one of the things you need for the test, and the most important uh, thing you need, is a, uh, an ultraviolet light source. And there's a number of types that you can get. Uh, there's the wand type here uh, that, that has a, a, an ultraviolet lamp. It's long wave, it's, it's about 365 nanometers is the proper wavelength. You can make a box like this. It, it's a simple box. Underneath you can see a lamp, uh, which is the ultraviolet light. Uh, and we have a, a place where you can put the samples under the box with the light and then look through the top uh, with a protective glass. We don't look at whole kernels of grain you must crack it open so we can see the inside. The fluorescence will be inside the kernel. So to, to break the, the grain, there's a number of ways of doing that. One would be to have a hammer that you can break it. Uh, another might be a mortar and pestle where you could put the grain in there and essentially uh, hammer it to break it. Uh, just needed to crack. A third way, you could get a uh, coffee uh, grinder uh, and just put the grain in there temp for a few moments, just, just enough to break. You don't want to grind it up too fine, but you want to break open the kernels. So that once you have it, um, your kernels broken, then you can place them under the light uh, and examine them for fluorescence. That fluorescence will be a, a, a green-yellow fluorescence, uh, we, and we call this a bright green-yellow fluorescence. You'll hear it called BGYF. And if you detect it in the grain sample, then you can assume that the, the, the pathogen Aspergillus flavus has been growing on that corn. Uh, and thus you should assume that aflatoxin contamination, uh, it, it could be presence. The more kernels that have fluorescence, the higher probability, the higher risk that there's going to be toxin in there. There is some false negatives and some false positives that, that where we see uh, no fluorescence but there's toxins in there, low levels, and we see sometimes lots of fluorescence and the toxin is not that high. Once you have the cracked corn, place it in a, in a tray, uh, here we have uh, clean corn and infected corn uh, which has aflatoxin and, and if we, we expose it to the, the UV light we can see that the the fluorescence in the contaminated grain. This grain here is quite contaminated, so we see a lot of for, more fluorescence than you might see. But the, uh, the clean corn will have none. If fluorescent kernels are found in, in a sample that you've examined, then you should assume that there, there is aflatoxin in, in, that, in that corn. How much will depend on, uh, on how many kernels. So the more kernels that are fluorescing, the higher risk that there's, there's higher levels of aflatoxin. The only way to determine whether how much is in there is to actually do the uh, chemical test uh, for the aflatoxin. The levels of mycotoxin, of aflatoxin that are important 
uh, have been set by the USDA, FDA. And typically if it's higher than 20 parts per billion in the sample, then, then it's illegal to sell that grain. And you can find the specific levels that affect animals in a table that's in our, our publication, BP83, uh, aspergillus ear rot and aflatoxin in corn.